When it comes to the automotive industry, the US automotive industry at least, Ford Motor Company has been responsible for two game-changing vehicles that have altered the course of history forever. The first is the Model T Ford, the first car that was produced on what we would consider a modern production line. It allowed economies of scale to come into play in a way that meant everyday people could actually aspire to owning their own automobile. And then there is the Ford F-Series family of pickup trucks, the first variant of which rolled off the production line in 1948 and which, more than 70 years later, is a brand that is still going strong. The most famous of the F-Series is, of course, the venerable F-150 pickup, which first entered into production in 1975, four years before I was born. When Ford introduced its first F-150 pickup, it was primarily a car company, but the F-150 was the first pickup to offer car-like features in a work vehicle. And now, 47 years later, the F-150 is Ford's cash cow. The majority of people who work for Ford in the United States are employed in jobs that are associated with or support the production of the F-150. Every hour of every day, 100 Ford F-150s are sold on average, and the F-150 has been North America's best-selling truck for the last 44 years. In 2020, a year where the auto industry took a massive hit from COVID-19, Ford sold nearly 787,500 F-Series pickups, a majority of which were F-150s. You can see F-150s used in every conceivable application as well, from immaculate daily drivers and show trucks that take well-dressed individuals to work in the city and have never really seen off-road use, through to daily drivers, building sites, farms and outdoor sports enthusiasts, the F-150 is everywhere. And when Ford unveiled a hybrid version of the F-150 last year, a truck with a killer built-in power inverter that meant customers could run power equipment on site right from the back of the truck, and a truck with plenty of power and torque, but a lot better gas mileage. Ford experienced high demand. But today, just moments ago in fact, Ford unveiled the latest truck to wear the F-150 badge, the all-electric F-150 Ford Lightning. And I think this could be the most important pickup truck that Ford has ever made. The most important electric pickup truck to be made, full stop. And frankly, the pickup truck that, if Ford plays its game right, could change its world and ours for the better. Today we're going to look into the features of the F-150 Lightning, explore what it offers customers, and explain why we have never been this excited about a pickup truck before. Looks first. From the outside, there's not a whole lot to tell the F-150 Lightning apart from its gasoline siblings. The truck is built to similar specs for the most popular variant of the F-150, a super crew cab and a five and a half foot bed. It has the same design language and even has similar headlights up front. But instead of the usual massive grille that's there to cool an internal combustion engine, the F-150 Lightning has a fully enclosed nose with a faux grille. From a distance, you might not notice any difference to the regular F-150, but close up, you'll see it's a subtly textured trim piece with the usual Ford oval front and center. The F-150 Lightning also comes with an LED light bar that runs across the top of the hood, a motif that's becoming increasingly popular in electric vehicle circles. The tailgate on upper trim levels also gets a side-to-side -side LED taillight. The side, there's a charge port door on the driver's front wing and of course no gas filler. At the rear, the lack of tailpipes is fairly obvious, as is the big Lightning badge on each rear quarter. While the F-150 Lightning and its 145 and a half inch 3.7 meter wheelbase might look identical to gasoline F-150s, underneath things are very different. The chassis on which the F-150 Lightning sits accommodates both the battery pack and the twin inboard motors that drive the truck along. It also does away with the traditional suspension setup of an internal combustion engine F-150, leaf springs at the rear, and gives the Lightning fully independent rear suspension. The wheels too, 18 inch, 20 inch, or 22 inch, depending on trim level, are also custom for the F-150 Lightning. They're aluminium and they're also fitted with specialized tires designed to handle the extra weight of the battery pack, which is 1,800 pounds, quoted yesterday during President Biden's visit to the Rouge production facility where the F-150 Lightning will be built. 
I'm not sure which battery pack that was for, however. The motors, providing all-wheel drive, are capable of outputting a total of 426 horsepower combined, 318 kilowatts, on the standard range F-150 Lightning, while the longer range F-150 Lightning has a more powerful 563 horsepower power output, which is 420 kilowatts. Each configuration can produce a maximum of 775 pound-feet of torque, which is just under 1,051 newton meters. That is some serious torques. And that torque comes in handy, as the standard range F-150 Lightning is rated to carry 2,000 pounds, 907 kilograms, as well as tow up to 7,700 pounds, 3,693 kilograms. Meanwhile, the F-150 Lightning Extended Range can carry 1,800 pounds, 816 kilograms, and tow an impressive 10,000 pounds, 4,546 kilos. Regardless of the trim or the battery pack, every F-150 Lightning comes with a Class 4 trailer hitch as standard, which, being a farm girl, is very useful to have. As to the battery pack, while Ford hasn't officially announced the battery pack capacity in any of its pre-launch press material, which is what we're basing this video on as we're setting the video to go live immediately after embargo lifts, you can guess pretty accurately from quoted charging times that the standard range F-150 Lightning has a battery pack of likely between 85 kilowatt hours and 100 kilowatt hours, while the extended range battery pack variant has a battery capacity somewhere between 100 kilowatt hours and 140 kilowatt hours. The battery itself sits between the chassis rails of the F-150 Lightning, Yes, the truck is the same body-on-chassis construction that pickup trucks have traditionally used for decades, with the battery pack enclosed in a rugged, waterproof casing. Underneath the truck are metal skid plates protecting both battery and drivetrain, and Ford says that it's tested the F-150 Lightning down to as low as minus 40. The units don't matter because that's actually where the two temperature scales agree, to ensure that it can still perform well in brutally cold weather. The battery pack itself, like the one in the Ford Mustang Mark E, makes use of active liquid cooling and, I'm guessing, features the same kind of preconditioning capabilities to get it ready for rapid charging. It also uses internal battery management, suggesting the same kind of modular construction that many automakers are now turning to for their next generation EVs. Like the Mustang Mark E, the F-150 Lightning can use up to 150 kilowatt DC quick charging stations, which is equivalent to Chargeway Green 6. And yes, as I understand it, plug and charge is standard. At that power level, you can fill the standard battery pack from 15% to 80% full in 44 minutes, or the extended range pack to the same state of charge in 41 minutes. Ford says that the standard range variant of the F-150 comes with an 11.3 kilowatt onboard charger, while the extended range variant comes with a 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger. How quickly the car will charge from a domestic charging station does depend on if you are using the included 7.5 kilowatt portable granny cable, a hardwired 11 kilowatt charging station, or Ford's brand new Charge Station Pro which I will come to in a moment, and is rated to charge at up to 19.2 kilowatts. Ford quotes an EPA mileage estimate of 230 miles, which is 370 kilometers for the standard range F-150 Lightning, and 300 miles, 482 kilometers for the extended range variant. Those figures aren't official yet, but frankly, Ford's EPA estimates for the Mustang Mark E weren't too bad, and I've got no reason to doubt that these estimates for the F-150 Lightning are any worse. Of course, those figures aren't towing figures or load carrying capability figures, but just like an internal combustion engine pickup won't get its EPA gas mileage towing 10 grand, nor will this truck get its EPA range towing a large amount. And no, I know. With that kind of battery capacity and those kind of range estimates, this isn't going to be the most efficient vehicle out there. If you want that and you don't need a work truck, go buy a Tesla or wait for an Aptera to come to market. Look, the F-150 Lightning isn't built for efficiency or show. It is built for work, to do the things that working pickup trucks are designed to do. It's not built to be a show truck. It's not built to be a lifestyle pickup. 
It's built to get you to your work site, do the thing and get home again, to carry hay to your horses or your cows, and as I'm going to come to in a second, do a whole lot more too. Ford takes its built Ford tough marketing slogan seriously, and there is nothing about the specs on this truck that make me think that Ford is somehow not going to achieve that in usual everyday use. Something Ford has made a big deal about with the F-150 Lightning though is its frunk. Because there's no engine up front, the frunk, which features a powered lift and close mechanism for obvious reasons, offers up to 14.1 cubic feet or 400 litres of waterproof, weatherproof storage. During the embargoed briefing on the F-150 Lightning I attended last week, Ford's engineers were keen to point out that the faux grille of the truck's frunk was attached to the hood, meaning that the load bay area was an easily accessible level for loading luggage. And because the F-150 Lightning has onboard power outlets in the frunk area, it can either be used to power devices or keep things like cool boxes running on the road, or even allow the area to become a mobile standing desk while you're parked. It's also washable in case you fill it with stuff that's messy and has an integrated drain plug. So with all of the exterior taken care of, let's go to tech and features. Exactly what you'll get with your F-150 Lightning will depend on which trim level you pick. There's the XLT, Lariat and Platinum trim levels, which, as you might expect, can be specified with whichever battery pack you'd prefer. Ford mentions a fourth variant of the F-150 Lightning in its press releases, which I'm going to assume is its first edition, which is similar to the Mustang mach -E, first. Each trim version comes with Ford's Pro Power onboard inverter. First introduced in the hybrid F-150, this provides either 2.4 kilowatts of onboard power or 9.6 kilowatts of onboard power via two 110 volt sockets in the cab, two 110 volt sockets in the pickup bed, and four in the front trunk, plus a single 240 volt outlet in the higher two trim variants. The truck will automatically shut off power to these inverters if it detects the state of charge will drop below the power needed to get it to a charging station. This, frankly, should completely eliminate the need for most tradespeople to take a gasoline generator with them to job sites, as well as making camping a breeze if you are someone who wants to do as much recreation with your pickup as you do working. Inside the cab, there is the same fold-flat gear selector that is standard on all F-150s, allowing the centre console area to become a makeshift desk for a laptop, or perhaps even a place to just sit and eat your lunch. And the centre touchscreen display has the same connectivity and features as the Mark E we reviewed this past weekend. Review here. It also has the same over-the-air update connectivity and telematics. One thing that I think is worth mentioning is that the Ford F-150 Lightning Companion app features extra things that you might not expect. One of them being an onboard scale feature that can literally tell you how much weight your F-150 Lightning has on board and how close it is to its official limit. I'm sure some people will view this as a feature and others might view it as a big brother moment in case you break your truck by overloading it. But it helps the truck guess its real world range based on what you've got on board. So you are not going to end up finding yourself running out of charge just because you're carrying heavy things. Hitching up a trailer also lets the system know that you're pulling a load and again, it will automatically adjust accordingly in terms of predicted range and where its onboard route planner thinks you need to stop next to charge. Ford's sync connectivity package is standard too, but which version you get depends on which trim truck you buy. Entry level trims get sync 4 and a 12 inch landscape LCD screen as standard, while sync 4A is standard on the upper two trim levels with the same portrait 15 and a half inch screen found in the Ford Mustang Mark E. LTE hotspots, wireless phone charging, and wireless Android Auto and CarPlay are included as standard. But interestingly, if you want to use your phone as a key that isn't available on the entry-level trim, it's only an option on the mid-level trim, and it's only actually included as standard on the top level. What is standard across all models is Copilot 362.0, which is Ford's latest safety package and it includes the standard safety features that are now found on most vehicles. Pre-collision, blind spot warning, lane keep assist, cross traffic alert, emergency braking, auto high beam, reverse sensors, and more. The upper two trim levels also get intelligent adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane centering, and speed sign recognition, while the top package gets blue cruise as standard. It's optional on the mid trim package. 
For those who don't know, Blue Cruise is Ford's answer to semi-autonomous driver assistance. It's a hands-off system and users monitors in the cabin to make sure the driver is paying attention to the road ahead, even if they don't have their hands on the wheel. I could go on, but I'm not going to. The usual stuff you'll find in any Ford F-150, like power adjustable seats and in-cabin power, is available, as are all of the usual cameras and assist packages for towing. But there's one more thing I haven't discussed yet, a truly killer feature that I think will make this pickup extremely valuable, something Ford calls Ford Intelligent Backup Power. If you buy a Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck with Ford's 80 amp charge station Pro, your truck will be capable of automatically becoming a backup power battery for your home. Depending on the model of pickup you choose, you can export either 10.5 kilowatts of instantaneous power or 17.6 kilowatts of instantaneous power from your truck to run your home in an emergency. And Ford says its intelligent power system can detect to and react to a blackout, switching over from charging to providing vehicle to home power. It says most people, <laughs> certainly not this household, just consume about 30 kilowatt hours of power a day, and says that this should be as much as three days of power in an emergency, more if you ration your power. Another hint that we're looking at a battery pack size of at least 100 kilowatt hours for the extended range variant, assuming the truck proactively keeps some of the battery pack capacity for travel at lower end of its state of charge. Ford also says it will roll out something called Ford Intelligent Power in the future, which will let the truck power homes during peak periods in a normal day and then charge overnight or in off-peak periods, saving costs for its owners and potentially reducing electrical grid demand. It even says it's planning a collaboration with a solar energy company to integrate generation into its ecosystem, but it hasn't gone into great details. Despite the battery pack size and everything else, Ford has stated that the entry-level F-150 Lightning will start at $39,974. That said, the high-end Platinum is expected to be the most expensive F-150 that Ford has ever offered. But here is where we get to cost analysis and benefits. People who buy an F-150 for work buy it as a taxable expense. And of course, so too is fuel and maintenance on that pickup truck. With an all-electric drivetrain and fewer maintenance costs, as well as noticeably lower fueling costs, I mean, the standard ICE F-150 has a 26-gallon fuel tank, the total cost of ownership for the F-150 Lightning over its lifetime should be noticeably less than the cost of a gasoline F-150, especially if they're kept for extended periods of time. And that's before you account for all of the time saved for independent contractors and workers who can use high occupancy vehicle lanes in an EV and currently find themselves stuck in busy traffic in the parts of the world where high occupancy vehicle lanes allow electric vehicles to just use them even if there's one person inside. Additionally, unlike the Tesla Cybertruck and Rivian R1T, Ford's electric pickup is based on a pre-existing vehicle platform, one which already has an incredibly versatile and established ecosystem of aftermarket accessories, modifications and add-ons. Ford states that existing customers will be able to use some of the accessories they already have for their current pickup with the F-150 Lightning, saving them time, money and costly retrofitting. Then there's emergency backup power in a vehicle to home setting. We have massive solar panels on the roof of our home, but no battery because a battery backup system powerful enough for both our panels and our energy needs would be upwards of 30 or $40,000. But buying a pickup truck with the functionality built in as standard? That is a whole lot more approachable. Which is why, I guess now is as good a time as any, that my partner and I have decided to put down a $100 deposit on an F-150 Lightning. Sure, it's big and it's not my idea of a daily driver, but as this channel has grown and the number of people working on it has grown, we now need something pretty large to carry the large amounts of camera equipment and crew that we take to events. A work truck that can also power our rural home in an emergency and help get my wife wood for her shop? and has standard parts, and a company that isn't anti-right to repair and lets customers buy replacement bits to install themselves? Yeah, that sounds like a great deal to me. 
And I get it. Ford is the subject of a lot of hate right now in the electric vehicle community. Tesla fans are bound to say that the Cybertruck will wipe the floor with the F-150 and Rivian fans will say the same for the R1T. But when it comes to pickups and popularity, Ford wins every time with conventional pickup customers. Customers who might not consider an electric pickup, but might be tempted if it's a Ford. I know people who have been purchasing F-150s as their work trucks for decades, and I suspect this new F-150 Lightning may entice them towards a plug-in future. It's not a strange, unusual truck with a quirky design and minimalist interior that they've got to relearn how to use. It's a work truck with a different fuel system and drivetrain, but one which, at least on paper, looks that it can perform just as well as most of Ford's ICE pickups. And yeah, okay, there are a few situations where the internal combustion engine F-150 may still win over. The F-150 Lightning doesn't have the maximum towing capabilities of the most powerful ICE variant. And for those who use their F-150 to transport massive trailers from coast to coast every single week of every month, the electric F-150 might not be a good choice for their future. But these, make no doubt, are edge case scenarios. And with the added features that this truck offers, I honestly think that Ford has just struck gold. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.